of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public participation. Nobody. Okay. Been so quiet with public participation, which isn't always a bad thing. But <laughs> all right, approval of minutes. Uh, minutes of April third, two thousand and seventeen. These are the two sets of minutes. These. These are the sealed minutes. Okay. Thank you. Oh, so this is our first one then. Did you take 10E and 10A? Oh, no, I didn't. Thank you. Actually, there is one change that we need to make. The mm -hmm. public minutes from April 3rd were approved last mm -hmm. time. They're on the agenda, but they, I missed that part. So those are already approved, so we can cross those out. It was the non-publics from the last session that were tabled. So the okay. non-publics. Date to cross out again? Uh, just the public from April, April 3rd. April 3rd. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we, minutes from April 3rd, non-public session one, which have, have been sealed. Do I have a motion? So moved. So moved by Mrs. Cardinal. Second. Second by Mrs. Morin. Any discussion on these? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. All right. Okay. Um, April 3rd, non public session 2. So moved. So moved by Mrs. Morin, second by Mrs. McElhenney. Any discussion on non public session 2 from April 3rd? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Non public session 3 from April 3rd. So moved by Mrs. Cardinal, second by Mrs. McElhenney. Any discussion on those? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. April 17th. Oh, can we go back to the third? Sorry. Public? The, 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 the non-public session two. Oh, session two from non, yeah? We can. Um, page three, um, Mrs. Grieve's name is spelled wrong. Okay. And um, G H A R E E B. G H A R E E B. Yeah, I had to look it up. Okay. And uh, the retirement versus. Is that Res it? resignation? Uh, no, that's in the. Oh. Yeah, retirement versus resignation for um, the second grade teacher. Third grade, Mrs. Third Tierney? grade. Yes. Yes. Third grade. Oh, it's third been a while grade. since I've been there. Okay, let's uh, re-vote on those as amended. <coughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you, Penny. Mm -hmm. Minutes, April 17th, non-public session one. Do I have a motion? Uh, so moved. So moved by Mrs. Cardinal. Second. Second by Mrs. Morin. Any discussion on these? Just be reading. These were sealed, so we're mm -hmm. skimming through them. I put my mirror on. All set, Mr. Frieda? Okay. Yeah. All those in favor? Okay. And I'm, I'm an abstention. I'll be abstaining from all the April 17th minutes as I was not here that evening. Uh, motion for April 17th, non public session two. So moved. So moved by Mrs. Morin. Second. Second by Mrs. Cardinal. Discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Abstain? Minutes of April 17th, non public session three. So moved. So moved by Mrs. Cardinal, second by Mrs. McElhenney. Any discussion? Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Abstain? April 17th, non-public session four. Can we discuss these in non-public? I have some um, amendments to propose. Motion to table. Do have a second. second? Second by Mrs. Moore. And all those in favor of tabling? Aye. Okay. 
I'll abstain. Just well, I can vote the table. I'll vote the table. Uh, okay, minutes of April seventeenth, public session. So moved. So moved by Mrs. Cardinal. Second by Mrs. McElhenney. Discussion. Hearing none, I'll call for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. Oh, I'm I'm abstained. Sorry. Happy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. New business. Well, we have a graduation date. We're trying to. How exciting! I realize we typically do that the second one in April and didn't. Okay. So there are many who are waiting with bated breath. Yes. <laughs> Cards already went out. Awesome. <laughs> okay. So we would like we would like it to match the cards. <laughs> <laughs> what do we get for date? Date on the cards the seventeenth? Yes. June seventeenth. Do we have a motion to accept June seventeenth, ten AM? So moved. So moved by Mrs. Cardinal for Second. graduation. Second by Mrs. Moore. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Right. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, policies. Let's get some policies here. JKAA and JKAA-R, which are procedures for use of child restraint and seclusion. And the changes to the first is under the policy itself, the change would be the readopted date. Um, and then the change to the procedures section is on page nine, I believe. There's a lot of procedures. Mm -hmm. um, I take that back. Let's go for page 10. 10. Okay. Uh, 10. Yep, item number three. Um, and this was just newly um, included. Um, so the last law conference I went to, we do need to mention in our policy procedures that if there is a, a duty of an employee who feels that there has been a, a violation of restraint and seclusion, that it's they are they are bound to report that, um, and that we do need to include it in our policy. So the, the change is just to make to make that known. Are these in the May first folder? Yes. I, uh, yeah, I saw them earlier, but I they I are in. If you go to uh, sections 11, 12 for May one policies. And I just have a, a question. The first policy that was there is a, basically an overview. Is that what I was understanding? And then the second policy one is, is one is the policy it itself. The second is when you see an R, it's the related material oh, okay. that goes with that, and that outlines the procedure that needs to be followed to uphold the policy. Okay. Just do that. what's between the two. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's why one is a whole lot longer than the other. <laughs> what was she saying? Your, did you find the them? I did. I read them the earlier. I knew I had them. Oh, that's your question. Yeah, that's like the way this thing hides things, things on me. Yeah. What's the first read? A motion to accept as a first read. Motion by Mrs. Morin to accept as a first read. I'll second. A second by Mrs. McElhenney. Discussion? Questions? Mr. Frieda. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if we would need to vote on them again. I thought we were going to just pass these. You want them as a final read? Yeah, I would. I would. I would. I, I would uh, unless, unless somebody has a problem with them. We, we I, the the only these. change is that right, addition of. Yeah. Most of this is required by law. I'll change support it to a final read. read. Change your motion. Okay with the second. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, policy DN equipment and supply sales. Speak to this sure, one? sure. This um, policy was originally adopted June 15, 2015. So in your packet, um, what the policy committee did was um, some recommendations, making some adjustments that um, we clarify that um, property doesn't get disposed of until it's de declared to be surplus by the school board. Um, and we did add in number one um, in terms of priority by offering the equipment or supplies to the town of Farmington um, or its respective departments firsthand. Um, that we go through a public bid process if we are going to sell off property. And that another option for um, donating property would be through the state of New Hampshire Surplus Division. 
which is also known as the White Farm in Concord. So, um, a motion to accept as a final read. Second. Motion by Mrs. Moore and second by Mr. Frieda to accept as a final read. Discussion? Questions? Did this come to the policy committee? Was this one that I... This, this came last time. Oh, okay. It was one, the one policy committee I mean, missed. Um, yeah, do, we do have an example of um, where we had surplus property, and it fell between a couple of these um, particular actions. So I don't... I don't know if we need to make it so that this list of actions encompasses everything we could possibly do with surplus material. The specific example is the, um, the school bus, bus that we had. We had two school buses. We went out to bid for them. One of them went to the highest bidder, but the other, it was recommended that it go to a, it was like a hybrid charitable donation because it was <coughs> about 60% of what the highest bid was. Mm -hmm. And it went to a... Um, well, we did offer the property up by order of priority, offered it up to the town, the town okay. did not want it. So we did a public bid, um, and through the public bid process is where it was basically brought back to the board, what do you want to do? Um, and then if, if the board, you know, did not want to award it, then there would have been that option. Eventually, number six, by removal to the dump. <laughs> are, are you suggesting that these become a first do one, then do two, then do three, or? The, I guess that's what I'm asking is how I read this is first do one, then do two, then do three, because it says in the following priority actions. Mm -hmm. That to me would say here's our sequence. Mm -hmm. We try to do number one. If mm -hmm. for some reason we don't want to or we can't do number one, we do number two. Um, so, I mean, if that reads okay to everybody that we can do a hybrid of any one of these actions, any two of these actions, I should say. And I would have switched four and five. I would think giving it to our citizens over the surplus division. I mean, if, it, if that's in a priority. Mm -hmm. Mr. Fina? Does I mean, I, I, I can't think of anything off the top of my head that would be equipment, but I'm sure we have equipment that the town of Farmington wouldn't even consider, so we probably don't want to have to go through the trouble of having them decline something they obviously don't want. So I, I don't know that we need to have them in a, in a number. Maybe we just want to bullet it then and, and decide by the equipment and what it is, how valuable it is. And what, what do we want to do? I think we did follow the procedure with the school bus. We did number two, and we accepted a different bid than the highest one. And we do that. We have done that in the past, too. So I don't think we broke the policy. But I, I don't want to tie anybody's hand saying they have to go through all these pr processes before they get rid of something. True. That might be an easy. Mm -hmm. So do you want this to go back to the policy committee, or <coughs> do you want to just right here, right now, change it to bullets? I mean, is it important that it's sequential? I don't know that it has to be, no. I mean, I, a swing set probably right. wouldn't be going to the municipal offices. Right. Yeah, those sorts of things. I'd be stress relief. I know. Decisions. Never mind. free you up in that regard, though. That is true. Yeah. So I'll, I'll motion within my motion, I guess, to change it to bullets. Bullets as opposed to numbers. As opposed to numbers. Do we need to change the wording to as well above or yeah. no? Do we want to change the word priority? Yeah. Yeah, we can remove the word priority. Yeah, yeah. Word. It's bullets. Yeah. Like that. Remove the word priority. Make it bullet points. I second so that amendment. the motion is a final read with the amendment of removing the word priority and bulleting and taking the sequence out of the policy. Correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Uh, driver's Ed Services. We have a award. You have two beds in your pack. Yes. Okay. Just discussing those. 
you like to present? Sure. 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 Okay. Um, um, the contract with um, Tri City Driving um, is up on June 30th, and we offer through the high school program. We offer a driver's education program to our students and people in the community. Um, and so we went out and did a public bid. Um, we sent out um, bid offerings to five companies in the, the area who are already part of the um, New Hampshire Department of Transportation's list of approved um, driving schools. So we received two bids back, um, both for the same price. Tri-City Driving School is out of Rochester. Um, theirs is a bid price of $600 per class for a two-year period. And then also Benson's Driving School, we received a bid from them. They are from Fremont um, and also at the same rate of $600 um, per class for over a two-year period. Um, going over references and track record and um, uh, Tri-City Driving being in good standing, we're recommend recommending that we continue with Tri-City Driving School for the next two years. I'll make that motion. Motion by Mrs. Moran to accept. Second. Second by Mr. Frieda. Discussion? Um, just for the audience at home, um, just want to let you know that it, this is within our memorandum, and that is the program is run by Farmington High School, and parents and students pay full price for the program. There's currently no state aid that subsidizes the parent-student tuition. I just want to make it clear to the folks that we're not... Um, we don't make anything on it. Yep. Yeah. And the state doesn't add anything right. to it. Okay. Any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Bit of, we have a bit of word for radios. Um, Mrs. Mon, can I ask you to take over for a minute? I'm going to excuse myself for a moment. Sure. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. I exit having legs. <laughs> Good evening. Okay, the um, bid request for the radios. Yes. Um, this is, do you want to present it in tandem? Sure. <laughs> okay. Contacting this so this one. is to follow up um, Superintendent Vaughn's last report at the school board meeting that we were going out to bid, a public bid for um, radios that are compatible with our existing uh, Motorola brand radios. Um, and that we also do need a repeater system as well as um, because we're going to expand, we also need to do the one-time fee of the, uh, I should say the one-time 10-year fee of the FCC license. Um, mm. As a result, um, we sent out public bid documents, plus we put them on our website and we also um, have them published in Construction Journal um, actually, um, and there were six companies that we sent out to. We received three proposals back. Um, one, R and R Communications, is out of Swansea, um, in the amount of twenty thousand two hundred twenty-eight dollars. Second highest bidder is Green Mountain Communications in Pembroke for twenty-three thousand sixty-five dollars. And then two-way communications in, out of Guilford and Newington is $23,204. Um, we've been going through all of the documents that were provided to us in this RFP. Um, we actually had to go back to the first bidder, R&R, because it just did not look like they had included everything, and which they did not, and they had to amend their price. So, so is their amended the price? Amended. So that is their amended this price, amended price. Mm -hmm. of 20228 uh, do, do. um, But we are somewhat concerned that we're getting an apples-apples apples comparison. We're not, you know, if something has been missed in one RFP, what else yeah, do they miss? We specifically went back and, and said, but this doesn't seem to be included. What about, oh, yes, that would be this. But mm -hmm. as we're looking, they're not, the companies aren't delineating all of the parts the same way. And so one will say a repeater system and just give a lump price. The other will say, and here's all the components listed out. And so I don't know if this lump price includes all of those components or 
if that's going to be an add-on mm -hmm. later. Has anybody come out and actually looked at what we have? And they have. have. All, actually, all the companies all were told, you know, not as a mandatory bid, but that there was an opportunity for them to come out to the district on a certain day um, in April and be able to do a tour. Um, and um, two-way communications is very, very much um, in tune with what we currently have. They're also doing all of our buses right now. They've been doing our bus fleet now for wow. a 10 to 12, 15 years, a long, long time. So they're familiar um, with the area. Um, R and R did come out here, but did not meet with our staff. Um, could not Couldn't quite pinpoint exactly okay. when they were out here. I spoke with the the manager there. So, are you recommending um, two-way communications, or are we not ready for a recommendation yet? They're not the lowest bidder, but having gone through the quotes and what we have. I'm frankly more comfortable with two-way. Um, their bid was more complete. They've been out and have very specifically checked to see what works in what parts of the district, what doesn't, what equipment is a better fit for. Um, the fact that I'm getting, you can't quite pin down when they were here makes me a little nervous. Was it something um, that you would prefer waiting till our next meeting? Um, I don't see that I'm going to get a lot more information okay. that would change that. Maybe One not. of the things that we've seen, though, with two-way is that we're there in Guilford and Newington, and their, their staff drive back and forth right along Route 11, that when there's times that Bonnie has needed assistance with the radios, They've just stopped by here and, and have assisted. And it's not that she's needed service a lot, but just that it's been, let us help you out. Yep. And no bill. So I'm, I'm not certain what that would mean for a company who is in the Madnadnock region right. uh, or central New Hampshire. I, I, well, they told you they were here to observe and didn't bother to contact anybody to say they were coming out? That's yeah. kind of suspicious. <laughs> they didn't. I asked yeah. them specifically, did you come here on April 18th to meet with Bob? And I was like, no, but we're familiar. We've been out here. I'm like, no. when? That's not two-way. No, that's, that's not, not two-way. No, that's, no, that's, that's the other. Okay. No. The little information I saw, it seemed like two-way was very thorough. Um, I'm hesitant with the other two just because I feel like there would still be more added to their bids, especially where you consider it's probably not apples to apples. Uh, so I wouldn't even think that two-way communications at this point would even be the highest bidder. I think that they're just more thorough in their bid. Uh, plus, I, I like that they do have a, a solid track record with us and that they are mm -hmm. compatible um, equipment-wise. Mm -hmm. So that would be, I would be comfortable going. So is that your motion? I will make that. I'll I second. Thank no, you. finish this one. Okay. Second by Mr. Frieda. Any further discussion? Is this a multi-year contract? Two-year, right? Um, it would be for the purchase of the radios and the repeater system, and then they would be doing the um, work for the licensing for us. It's a 10-year FCC license. At that mm -hmm. point, we can you know, renew it on our own if we need to. But having purchased the radios through them, they also take care of what they service. Or would they service what they've sold? Oh, so it would so. be on a like a call basis. None, none of that would be covered. Um, well, th there is a. But they have but a track record. That's kind of the doing. scenario yeah. that we already have right now with the mm -hmm. buses, okay. bus radios. That you know there isn't. We're not bound by a contract, but the customer service is has there. been very good. Right. It's been phenomenal, actually. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the actual bids aren't included here. Um, is there a warranty on the equipment? Actually, we yes. Just did the, yes. Um, there were the manufacturer's warranty. I believe mm -hmm. it was no, two to three years. years. It was, it was it's a minimum of two for certain. Yeah. Okay. Um, yes. Two year two year warranty on actually everything: repeater, 
radios, all different styles of the radios. Mm -hmm. Yes, two gear. There are two different style radios. One would be for admin staff, and one would be for teaching staff. It's a little bit lighter weight radio to take out to recess or recess or that sort of thing. Okay. Anything else? Do Do we have anything? Or I guess. I, I have little patience for people who can't follow an RFP and give you what you ask for. Do, do, is there anything in there that says they are disqualified if they don't follow the format? Mm. Maybe we should consider yes. making that, putting that in there and just saying that, you know, you, we don't want to even consider you unless you follow this format so we can do an apples to apples comparison. So if, Actually, if we have the, that. probably at the very end, um, it allows for, I think it's on page four of the specifications, there is a section in there that allows for um, the board, the district, to reject and accept partial, partially, to reject out of formality uh, your bid. Um, so I believe that that language um, and those were signed as we understand that. Right. Yeah. So either so yes, either all, they I had them sign the page. <laughs> so either they don't necessarily want the want the job or want the want the contract, so they just didn't pay attention or they just don't pay attention and in either case I'm kind of leery about that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> All right, anything else? Any further? All those in favor? Aye. I'm going to abstain just because I missed a large chunk of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, electric, electricity supply board. Um, <coughs> Some time ago, uh, before I had started in the district, um, the district would go out to bid using using a broker um, to get prices for electricity supply. Um, those brokers have been approaching me and asking about, you know, when are you going out to bid? When are you going out to bid? Um, I know this is something that um, former board member Mr. Petrie um, really wanted me to hone in on and target in on its determine is there a way of saving some money. The belief system is that the district can be saving some money by going out and, and purchasing electricity. But in my report to you, we actually went out um, on two occasions um, because it really, it's a commodity um, and there are daily rates that are provided. Um, so what I did was I went out to bid to what is for suppliers which those are the companies that actually provide the um, electricity through the poles. Um, the poles and the delivery piece, Eversource still owns that piece. Mm -hmm. So um, we're just we're paying for the commodity. So we did a public bid um, and looked at suppliers as well as the, the list of, of companies who were brokers. Um, and I included in my report, we, um, I sent out to six of them, of which I received three responses. Um, Freedom Energy Logistics is a broker out of Auburn, New Hampshire. Um, MSI Utilities is also a broker out of Dublin, Ohio. And Standard Power, um, they are out of Portland, Maine, also a broker. Um, so you'll notice in my report, I've given you the this, this scenario that you do, when you have a broker, then they're going to charge you a fee. Um, so in summary, right now we're using Constellation Energy, which is just the supplier. Those are the invoices that you see on the manifest. And right now it's a floating, it's a floating rate. So what we did was we looked at the last um, five months to determine um, what those floating rates looked like. In March, for example, um, the high school was at 0.054 cents per kilowatt. Um, Valley View was at 0.061 cents per kilowatt. And Memorial Drive was at 0.0533 per kilowatt. Comparing the variable rate with what we received for the lowest um, locked-in contract for 18 months, it's 0.065 cents. When you even start looking at the penny <laughs> or the tenth of the cent, I mean, it can, it can amount to a lot, uh, several mm -hmm. thousand dollars over the year. Um, 
my recommendation is just providing this this exercise that, that I've gone through, but just providing and demonstrating to the board that at this point, I think that we should just stay with Constellation Energy um, at the variable rate. You'll see in my report how I showed the peak months uh, of December, but then it leveled it leveled off. So your peak month is when your demand is, is when all the demand is in, in, in the Northeast region. So I give you my two-page report, so. <laughs> what was the usage that we used when we went out to bid? Well, what I do is I took all the accounts, and I it's online, actually, um, on our website. So all the companies can take a look at um, uh, we scanned all of our bills for Constellation and Eversource. So, but just to give you an idea, the high school uses 300,000 kilowatts per year, approximately. Um, so that gives you an idea of, on that penny, you know, $3,000 savings a year. Um, um, I um, asked because uh, I remember, you know, you're saying Mr. Petrie had asked, in his request it was, could the town and schools leverage total usage to get a better rate. But I don't think, are you coordinating with the town as to when they'd be due to go out and get a new rate? And um, I just did this as part of the school piece. At this point, um, we haven't. <clears throat> yeah. Um, certainly, I'm happy to sit down and talk to Arthur. I don't know that our contracts are going to coordinate at the same time. Right now, we're not under contract, so right. we have the fluidity. Right. Um, I can certainly check and see where that is. Yeah. I would say at least for the meantime, we're better off staying where we are. If for some reason we get a huge savings combining their buildings with our buildings, we can certainly look at it. But right now we don't we don't have the same rate for each of our buildings. So right. adding the safety building is probably going to be an advantage for us because it's brand new and the energy rating for that building should should be pretty good. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. They may see adding Henry Wilson as a liability. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to look and see until I can get some things changed. Right. right. So. so you don't need anything from us? That was just information? Just to accept the report? Accept the and results? Mm -hmm. And to at this point to stay with Constellation? I've got the variable. There's That's no the contract variable. with Constellation. Right. Um, so, I mean, the, the leverage would be entering a possibility of entering into a contract with one of these vendors using the purchasing power of both what the school buildings use and what the town buildings use. Depending upon what, what the broker would be, looking for. be on top of that. I don't know right. if they're using a broker or not. Right. You don't know if they're locked into a contract, so we had to find that out. Mm -hmm. And if, or if they're still floating, and then if both entities are floating, then that is actually a good thing in that we can come together we and can negotiate and have that flexibility. Certainly can check. But right now, not we want to do contract. it before peak time, though, right? Before December. As I'm. Yeah. Okay. A motion to accept the report. Motion by Mrs. Moore and second by Mr. Frieda for the discussion. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. Aye. Ratification of the March 28th vote. What I included in your packets was an advisory that Drummond and Woodson has just put out in general. It was not sent to us in specificity. Um, but this says that um, on the 21st of April, Governor Sununu signed into law H uh, House Bill 329 advised all school districts to postpone their elections or annual meetings due to, the, due to the severe snowstorm on March 14th. The bill is effective immediately. Um, it did ratify the elections of all individuals who were elected to any position, so that requires no additional action. However, the governing body may hold a properly noticed public hearing to legalize, ratify, and affirm all actions, votes, and proceedings held at any school district election or annual meeting postponed. Um, it goes on to talk uh, to strongly suggest that any districts that had bond issues or contracts that were passed 
that they take this action to make sure that there's nothing down the road that could be used to question the legality of those actions. Mm -hmm. And so it's a matter of setting a public hearing. It can be done in conjunction with a regularly scheduled meeting, hear all sides, and then it would be a matter of this board voting to ratify what was voted on that night. But the public hearing has to precede that vote first. Um, in light of the fact that we had two contracts, I'm strongly recommending that we go through that process just mm -hmm. to make sure that we're good in any way, shape, or form. Um, but that rests with you. Mm -hmm. So May 15th would be our next scheduled school board meeting. Mm -hmm. I'll make the motion that we hold the public hearing. Right, uh, now. Uh, a public it hearing has to be noticed 72 hours in advance. Right, and does it, does it suggest how long? Um, it does, uh, let me see here, it must allow testimony from the public on all sides of the proposed vote before it closes, before the school board closes the hearing and votes. So I would say the length of the public hearing is dependent upon the number of people you have in attendance. Okay, so we have to set a time. <coughs> right. um, okay, I have a motion from P by Penny to hold it on May fifteenth. Do we want to try to hold it at six? Fine with me. I'll, I'll second that. It's second by seconded. Stan. Mm -hmm. Discussion. Can we? Okay, so let's say we have this public hearing. Nobody comes in. <laughs> Can I would we, say you can close it can after. We, can we, but can we conduct other board business and have that first hour be public uh, hearing? Mm -hmm. But can we conduct other board business and then if someone comes in, let recess? me check. I'm not I don't know sure how that about works. that. I, well, I, I know when we've done them in the past, it's been half an hour while we're just kind of sitting and shooting the breeze, mm -hmm. and then at that point, if there's no one who's come through. It's closed and declared done. If you have a line out the door of people who want to speak, it goes longer. Okay. So we have a motion. I would say if we notice it that way, okay. that it starts at 6, yeah. and if nobody's there by 6.15, we're going to move on to our, or 6.30, whenever a regular meeting would be. We well, I, I get a legal opinion on how long we have to hold it open. Typically, I believe it's 30 minutes, but I will okay. double check that. Motion by Penny for, for the 15th. Uh, at six. Second by Mr. Frida. All those in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. We'll be right here. <coughs> uh, May 8th, we were invited to the Joint Board's uh, meeting um, at the Lake Region Technical Center. Yes, I yeah. wanted to check to see how many had RSVP'd for that as to whether or not we need to post a meeting. So, I'll need to post a meeting for that. Yeah. Did you? Okay. Want to go? It's a joint. It's a joint board meeting with Governor Wentworth because we send our students. It's awesome. There. She may not have gotten it, being a new member. Oh, yeah. I she know. might not have. I don't know if the yeah. superintendent had your, maybe didn't have your yeah. new email. So May eighth. Um, we're basically invited to a joint meeting of the various schools that send students to the to that center, um, and it's excellent. The students and the um, is it culinary. the culinary program and Dinner's Mr. Jazokas and they put it's several <laughs> courses. <laughs> no, it really is it really nice. We do the It's like the fanciest meal I have all year. <laughs> Related it's to important business as well. Yeah, the the dinner should fall. <laughs> yeah, we do a little business. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So, did you want her to RSVP for you? or? Uh, yeah, is it too late? I don't know, no. but I will no. certainly no. check. No. I wouldn't think so. Probably not. Absolutely. I'll I think I have. All right. Okay, so we'll post that. Yeah. Uh, buildings and grounds, facilities use, fee schedules, and streamlined processes. Um, and I put that there because there was a lot to it. Um, yeah. I spoke briefly with Joel wanting to have the buildings and grounds committee, subcommittee, look at a few pieces rather than try to plop everything back on the board at once. Mm -hmm. but. Buildings and grounds, the facilities use has become a little unwieldy. 
we need to streamline some processes. We're looking at um, some programs that may help us better with scheduling. We also need to look at, we'd like to look at a fee schedule so that if we have people coming in from outside the community or people who are coming in looking to use the facilities on a for-profit basis, that we're not just opening things up, that we have an understanding with folks right up front, this is what the fee schedule will be to use the facilities, this is what it will be if you are looking for police, here's the hourly rate. If you're looking for custodial, here's the hourly rate. And if they're here, we are looking at having custodial. Here's the hourly rate for that. So that there's no surprises. It's very upfront with the scheduling. We have, here's what is required for insurance. Here's what is required, rather than chasing some of those pieces. Mm -hmm. um, and, Well, I, I guess my, my initial question is, and we, I think we briefly discussed yeah. this and we're going to hash it out tonight, would buildings and grounds make a recommendation to policy committee? Because there would be a, it's really, there's a use policy. There'll be a use policy, but the fee structure would be separate. That's procedure rather than policy. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I just don't want to add another step if we don't need it. So mm -hmm. we would be... It's okay, so Policy's still... churning through a lot right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well... You can get on the list. Um, I guess part of what, what sort of prompted this along is we, we do have a um, private, for-profit um, baseball instructional organization that has a variety of teams, one age group of which has been um, using our fields. Um, my biggest concern is uh, on a rainy day, who makes the call whether or not the field is used? Who's looking out for the best interest of the school since there are fields, and especially during the season when we're, when we're in season for our own spring sports? Um, and, you know, we had to make a call recently. Uh, Larry and, and Ruth Ellen, thankfully, on a, on a Saturday morning had to make a call um, that the field wasn't going to be used. I'm not so sure that um, that call would have been made if we hadn't gotten involved. Um, I'm also a little concerned with how they line their fields. Um, I have a hard time believing that this group brings in their own field liner. Um, and my, my suspicion is that somebody that works within the district that's connected to the group may let the group use our field line and stuff. Um, when, you know, it'd be one thing if it were like Five and a Boys and Girls Club and they were providing, you know, but this is a for-profit organization that's using our fields. I'm very, very against, me personally, them using um, our supplies to prepare their fields. These kids pay in excess of $3,000 to play for this team. So there's money there to buy their own stuff. They don't need to use ours. We're, you know, um, so I think we, you know, buildings and grounds needs to take really take a look at this and and. Um, do you want? Clarify. Do you want? I know that buildings and grounds was meeting prior to um, school board meetings, but if there's a time that you want to meet that is more convenient, because I know next next Monday we just made a. Well, next, next Monday, Monday dinner. Next Monday, <laughs> Sorry, the, 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 the next, next Monday is the, dinner. In the right, the next following one we have the um, public yeah. hearing. Um, so if there's an afternoon. Because who is it now? You, you and, and I? I. Okay. Um, I know it was me. I just didn't know who the second person was. <laughs> um, well, certainly, if there's another evening, I'm willing to. I'd I'd like to do it on that evening. I would just say that maybe we start at five. Okay. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. I just as long as I know ahead of time I can I can yeah. arrange that. So on the eighth or the fifteenth? On the fifteenth. Yeah. And so it's just nice no, to get no it. children. Well and that's fine. You never know. We have to squeeze something in. Okay. We'll figure it out. Yeah. 
And you'll know later on in the week prior if you have student issues. Oh, and if sure. you do, we can we can make some changes in the post. Okay. Um, anything else on that? Before we, I, yeah. excuse me, before we move on to the old business, Brian, I believe, has brought a, a report for the board. Is oh. that accurate, Brian? Just yes, I was told I was to, uh, I was to of course, so catch everyone up on um, current events. So okay. I have this um, all typed up, and I'm, I've also been told copies have been made to um, pass out to everyone here. So whenever mm -hmm. need be, um, do I talk into this? You're fine. It, it can pick you up. You don't have to have Oh, okay, cool. All right, so shall Next I? Next time I will add you to the, the minutes, Brian. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> it's okay. So shall I? All right, as was stated last month at the beginning of the 2016 to 2017 school year, a small group of students advised by faculty was formed called Tigers to Tigers. It is the aim of this group to, through the student body, improve both the community here at Farmington High School and the community of Farmington, New Hampshire as a whole. Recently, the Tigers to Tigers group has been discussing the HAT policy here at Farmington High School and plans to submit a list of questions to the superintendent and school board for their review and hopes to discuss these questions in an upcoming board meeting. In addition, the group is also considering lighting and or repairing Fernald Park after some fundraisers, of course, and working with the superintendent regarding a, a, a recycling program when the time is appropriate as future projects. In addition, the 2016 to 2017 school, as the 2016 to 2017 school year enters its final months, some more events are, of course, taking place. Notably, all students who will be attending Farrington High School in the 2017 to 2018 school year have submitted or will be submitting, assuming there are stragglers, course registration sheets, and a schedule is currently in development. Furthermore, the HOR advanced placement exams are beginning. These exams, as implied in the name, will be administered to students in advanced placement classes all throughout this month. In particular, the literature and composition exam will be administered Wednesday, May 3rd, the language and composition exam on Wednesday, May 10th, and the world history exam on Thursday, May 11th. Additional whole events are also being drawing near. The setup for the art show and the art show itself will occur this Thursday and Friday on May 4th and May 5th. Transition night is on Wednesday, May 3rd at 6 p.m. And the early college planning night for freshmen and sophomores is on Thursday, May 4th at 6.30 p.m. The curriculum fair is on Wednesday, May 10th. And this school's chapter of National, the National Honor Society will be holding its induction for new members on Tuesday, May 16th. And students who qualify as New Hampshire scholars will be attending a Fisher Cats game on Thursday, May 18th. As far as state testing is concerned, juniors will soon be taking the kneecap science test this month, and STAR tests will be administered during the week of Tuesday, May 30th to Friday, June 2nd, technically Monday, May 29th, but th there is no school to my knowledge on that day. Um, but this will be administered to freshmen and sophomores. Baseball and softball teams from Farmington High School are also currently in full swing, no pun intended. Baseball currently is at 2-2 two -two with the JV team at 1-3. Very nicely All done. Right. Right. Yeah, a lot going on. A lot going on. Wow. <laughs> yeah, you got it. I'm impressed. Wow. That's awesome. It helps that it's single space. Double spacing is my nightmare because that means it goes well over two pages and then I need to figure out how exactly I'm supposed to um, make it shorter if there's a length restraint. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Brian. If I could just keep it soft space with impunity. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Zawacki's report, spacing. I did leave you a flyer. Shonda Tebow's done an excellent job of. of Preparing them again, another life after high school resource night. Mm -hmm. um, these are this is designed specifically for families with students with disabilities as they're getting ready to transition either to vocational rehabilitation, um, career, um, college, um, mm -hmm. and there are going to be a variety of booths um, present. New, New Hampshire Vocational Rehabilitation will be here. Community Partners, um, Disability Supports from UNH and Great Bay Community College, Parent Information Center, and HTI. Um, and student groups will be present as well. This, I think, is the second or maybe third year um, she's done this, and it's, it's a well-attended night. There is food, raffles, child care available, so we'd like to invite. It is designed for families with students with disabilities, um, but certainly anyone is welcome. Um, so we'd love to see people come out on, on May 3rd uh, at 6 p.m. at the high school. Okay. I have one other um, new business before we move to five. Oh, Sorry. I have one, too. Go ahead. Um, I have a question. There's, there's been a, um, oh, is this, you want to go on with that before I move on? Can I just ask one yeah. really simple question? Um, the student group Tiger Roars, that's different from the yes, student group Tigers um, to different. Tigers? Yes, it is Tigers to Tigers was, um, is advised by several staff members and consists of various different <coughs> students. There's myself and several freshman students, including my brother Connor. Um, Tiger Roars, however, instead of being started at the beginning of this year, was started last year by, he was a junior at the time. I, 
actually, no, I think it was earlier this year. Um, currently, he is a senior. Tigers Her Roars was started by a student named Max Horwitz, mm -hmm. um, and it's a self-advocacy group. Okay, thank you. They are two very different things, and mm -hmm. I know I've experienced that same confusion myself. Okay, thank you very much for making the Anytime. Hopefully, Quan is listening. Get the shout out. <laughs> <laughs> Doubts. <laughs> uh, I doubt my brothers will be interested in sitting down to watch the um, entire well, school. Because you're here. There. <laughs> 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 Mr. Quan's mom. Only if I want to annoy my brothers in no way. I just wanted to check in. I, I've noticed that several school districts have sent out a letter regarding 13 reasons, and I wasn't sure if if our school district has sent it out because I don't have a student here anymore. So there is a um, an email that went out, and it is posted on our website. Okay, yes. thank you, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mr. Jazokis. Oh, sorry. Mr. No, Fee. go ahead if you do. Oh, can, can I bother you to go to the mic for a minute? Because I just I do want to ask a question about um, National Honor Society. Is there a, 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 a each year? Is there a limit as to how many students new new students get in? No, there's not. No limit. No okay. limit. When a student doesn't get in, and they think, "Geez, I got the grades, I got the community service," mm -hmm. um, who can they talk to and say, "Well, how come?" Mm -hmm. You know, and. Do they get more than just, well, you know, it's just not your year? I mean, are we, are we, are we telling them, look, you meet these two criteria, but these right. two you're lacking in. Right. You know, give them like a plan so that they can, because I, I think lately there's been a, a little bit of social media attention on this. Not, nothing real negative, but mm -hmm. just some concerns. And I don't usually bring those up at, when I see them on social media. But I think there was some real good debate about, about how, you, how you get in if right. you're not, if you're not finding yourself in what you can work on, what are they told? So, so the process is is that they have to meet certain criteria, grades wise, things like that. They get an opportunity to apply, and then so the students have the choice to apply or not to apply. Once they apply and they've met all the criteria, then their names go on a list. That list is then sent to the faculty and staff, and they're rated on a couple of the the pillars, uh, character and leadership. Mm -hmm. And so, <clears throat> that information is taken. Um, along with the application and the community service, and there's a committee that's, that is made up of, of faculty members. The two people who run National Honor Society only oversee that piece. They're, they're not a voting piece of that. They're just there to listen and, and answer any particular questions they might have. Once the committee makes those decisions based off of uh, the feedback plus their own interactions with the students, um, that's when the letters are sent. Uh, the kids are told whether they've made it or not. Kids can talk with the um, National Honor Society um, advisors about some of the specific reasons uh, as to why or why not. Mm -hmm. Some kids have gone to them and they've given them that feedback about, you know, there's some leadership qualities that people find that you're lacking or there's some things that, you know, people have brought up to that piece of it. So they do get that feedback when okay. asked. Yep. Okay. Yep. There is no appeal process as part of that piece of it, so uh, that committee makes those final decisions. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure there yep. was a, a, at least a process where a potential student is told, look, this is the area. Yep. This is the area that might be holding yep. you back because yep. then they can try to work on correcting it. Yep. So. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Mr. Friedman. Yeah, I just I just want to note and, and I'm going to make a motion. Uh, it's already May 1st, and we had elections in March, and we still have a board member who doesn't have their issued devices. And uh, I, you know, we all assumed that it was going to be no problem to turn this over. We didn't have a problem the first time we turned over, but this time we do. Um, so I'm going to move that we buy an, an, a sixth set so that we have one, so we don't inconvenience board members when former board members are giving us a hard time. It shouldn't take more than one ask to have our equipment returned to us. Everybody knows it's not for us to keep. So I'll move that we buy a sixth equipment. We buy a six piece so that Ruth Ellen has one on hand in case one breaks or we get a, a situation like this. I again. was actually going to make that motion, so I'll second it. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Mm -hmm. um, is that to make a sixth key, too? Um, I, <laughs> d I don't oh know. How, I, I, I don't <laughs> You're welcome to my That's key. That's true. I yeah. use it. Yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Motion and a second to buy a sixth piece. Discussion? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. I'm going to vote no. 
Uh, not because I don't think it's a good idea. Uh, I just felt like we shouldn't have to. <laughs> well, I know we shouldn't have yeah. to, but it's it's an inconvenience to certain uh, yeah. board members, and yeah. that's not fair. I know. I just think that one dissenting vote with that noted is important in this in this vote, actually. Okay. It's very, well, I guess I'll get creative with a line. With what? With a line. Oh, don't, we line. Line don't we have a line for this already? Don't we have a line for these, for um, the board I things? They must have come out of it, something. Yeah. Is there it, was, it was purchased out of year-end monies in the past. Because okay. we had mm -hmm. year-end monies. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Some, I'll see what I can do. Do, do we, have, we have money, right? Not as much as they have been <laughs> in other years. <laughs> right. They're not that. They're not. They're inexpensive. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh, business strategic innovations plan committee meeting and survey. Okay. Our next committee meeting is on May 11th. Um, surveys are up on the website they are um, Megan has said that she will put it on the town website for us with a link um, I have updated they are um, available in paper at the SAU office the town offices the Goodwin library Crowley's writing grill studios 393 Farmington house of pizza and any Farmington school um, as of noontime, we had about 45 electronic responses, and I've had probably 30 to 40 paper ones taken, but I haven't gotten them back yet. So I, I know they're out there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and if getting those dropped off at any of those locations is an issue, you're welcome to mail it back to us to let us know. And if it's not too far, I'll pick it up. <sighs> but, um, Thank you to those who have given us your input and um, to those who have caught the few glitches that have been in the system, and I think I've gotten the bugs worked out, hopefully. Um, it will be open through May 10th, and um, any feedback you can give us is gratefully accepted. So thank you, Dan. Have we, have we had a lot of um, surveys returned? I have about 45 that have come back electronically, um, and I have paper ones that are out, but I've not yet seen paper ones returned. So um, I've put several out this weekend in various and sundry locations, talked to a bunch of folks, hopefully didn't make too much of a pest of myself, um, spoke to a number of business owners this weekend and said, you know, if, if you're uncomfortable having a stack here at the business, that adds perfectly fine, but if you'd be willing to fill one out for us, that would be great, too. And most did take one a little bit. I mean, you I'm put a stack right down there. at the ballpark, at the little you know, youth baseball ballpark. I could do it that. might be a good place. Okay. Just I suggesting. Would. That's a great right. suggestion. There's a lot of people mm -hmm. in and out of there. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I have to it's take a, a big idea. rock as a paperweight, but mm -hmm. we'll do that. So, um, okay. Also on the website is the 13 Reasons Why. Um, and also a public notice regarding um, destruction of outdated special education records. Um, students born in 1992 or earlier, um, if you would like a copy of your records, please contact the SAU office and there is a, um, an email address too on the website um, by June 1st. Otherwise, 1992 and earlier will be shredded. I'm not moving them if I don't have to. <laughs> Um, but it might be worth having a copy if you're looking at wanting to look at any other types of disability services down the road. It could be helpful to have that in your personal files. So. Okay. Revisit diploma types. Okay. And if you looked at this first when I put it up, it has had a couple of iterations um, because I missed something the first time through and I apologize for that. Um, the Leadership Council met back in January. Um, this has since had come to this board in February, was sent to policy because this is going to inform and affect the graduation policy and a few other pieces as well. Um, we needed to 
wait until we saw where the contract was going so we knew how many hours we would have for teaching time and where that would fall. Um, so to make sure that you have the correct version, um, it, sh it should say one art credit under each the FSH diploma and the diploma with distinction. And they should both say information and communication technology. If you have those on, on the sheet you have, you have the right version. <laughs> Um, did you want to technologies. Sorry. Technologies. <laughs> I didn't get it, Flora. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. I will fix that. Um, do you have any questions or did you want to speak to Mr. Jusakis? Thank you. Uh, as stated in the previous uh, meeting when we discussed this originally, um, this has really come out of conversations about really taking a look at our, our graduation practices and making sure that, um, number one, it's updated to where we need it to be. Uh, number two, really identifying those kids, um, whether they're going for distinction, the FHS diploma, but also we have a group of kids that um, might be in our life skills program. Um, who currently receive a diploma but aren't really meeting the requirements based on what the Farmington School District is saying they need to meet in terms of English, biology, things like that. So this better and more accurately reflects that. Um, but it also allows now um, uh, taking a spin off of the New Hampshire Scholar piece where it's pretty straightforward uh, where you can get New Hampshire Scholars, you can also look at STEM and art. It allows kids to take a look and say, you know, what do I really like and really develop or design their own program as long as it's meeting some of the same uh, curriculum pieces as it would be under the, what you see there. So um, we're pretty excited about this opportunity. Uh, some of the things that we're talking about and working on are the idea of online classes. Um, you know, a lot of these kids who are going to be going off, whether they go off to a two-year or four-year school, they're going to be taking online classes. And a lot of kids don't understand what those what they are. They know they go online, but they don't understand how to stay on top of those classes, the submissions that go along with that. So this is going to allow us to be able to do some of those things as well. Mm -hmm. um, and also, in bigger picture, allow us to have that intervention enrichment block um, that we, we, we so desperately need. Uh, at the elementary level and the middle school level, you have RTI. RTI is really not huge at the high school level because there's really not a lot of software programs out there that, that can work through that piece of it. But this enrichment and intervention allows our kids and our teachers to be able to do some reteach uh, and some of those types of things and supports. A motion to accept for discussion. Motion by Mrs. Moran. Second by Mr. Frieda. Discussion? I didn't have any. Oh. <laughs> Everybody usually just yeah. starts talking, yeah. so I was trying to get ahead of it. <laughs> Comments or questions about this? I, I, I really just think this is a great idea and a, and a good way to move forward and, and get some dis distinctiveness to our program. So I would recommend that the board recommends this. Nice job on this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Does this fall in line with um, the New Hampshire Scholars? No. Nope. State requirements? Nope, it does, I'm sure. It well, does. The, the, so the state acknowledges diplomas of individual achievement. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. It's not up to... Mm -hmm. Okay. Having worked at a career school in Maine, I think it was a little different. Um, because Maine is different. Yeah. Maine is different, yeah. And so then I wondered if you had to, did you have to get, a, you, you don't have to get state approval. No. Okay. And in Maine, they, re, under the competency system, mm -hmm. it's a very different mm -hmm. level. It's different. And, and quite honestly, Joel, this, this, will fall under that competency piece, especially with the the um, um, the individual achievement piece, because it'll be based off a lot of that. But it's competencies within an individual's IEP. Correct. Right. In yes. Maine, the, in, the individual with the IEP has to meet the state competencies regardless. Right. And that's the difference. Right. But, mm. and so having an individual achievement diploma won't down the road prevent an individual from it, it, it is looked at the same way as, a, a, as diploma. a diploma in yep. the eyes of like a career school or something Correct. like that. Yep. And and like any other student, mm -hmm. they will probably need to take some type of placement exam. Oh yeah. Yep. Um, and 
that typically is is more what's used to determine either entrance or leveling mm -hmm. than if you have a diploma, it's a diploma. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Um, yeah. It, to, is the um, leadership council going to take the lead in communicating this change out, or are we going to? It would be part of Use the handbook. The handbook. Mm -hmm. It would be part of program of studies. It would be part of our pro school profile. Mm -hmm. and we meet. We meet with our students on a quarterly basis, um, and so when we meet with them, we'll go over this with them, and they already have an idea of some of the stuff we've talked about, some hypothetical situations and things like that. So they're aware of these things and, and the change to the schedule for next year and stuff like that. So as we continue down. Uh, and putting the final details to all of this, it, then it'll be okay. This is how it's working. Yeah. So I would just encourage over communicating. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, and then likewise for the classes of 2018 and 2019, the bell schedule change. I know these diplomas per se won't um, affect those students. Correct. But the bell schedule change, is it going to be spelled out that this is very while it is linked in this particular plan, the bell schedule change and going to the um, longer duration blocks so will be. With the, the fewer number of credits that are available, therefore, does that impact the mm -hmm. number of credits that they would need for graduation? Or their ability to achieve that. Right. So so we've required six, six credits each year by freshmen and sophomores. And so those, and now they're going to their junior year. So they'll have the opportunity of having five and five, mm -hmm. but also with the intervention and support block, they would receive an additional credit on top of that. Okay. Again, that also allows them, and, and some of the things that we're going to be doing uh, around competency-based is that there are kids that um, we could use technology, for example. You know, they go in and take a, a baseline, um, uh, you know, a basic technology class where the kids are bored in it. And so now they can competency, they can do competency, show that they're competent within that piece of it and receive credit for that. And so then they can move on oh, to that next level if they want, yeah. or they've, re they've met that requirement and then they can go on to something else. Mm -hmm. Same thing with other some classes. Of the periods as well because they can demonstrate, I've got this. Mm -hmm. right. that and that extra block allows kids to do online classes yeah. and stuff like that. So that will give them time to be able to do those as well. So. That's great because I think, um, you know, you may find a challenge and maybe you already see it. Uh, when I talk with parents, um, in particular at the Henry Wilson in high school levels, they don't equate online coursework as a positive thing, as an opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, they equate it as, well, you're not able to hack it in the classroom, mm -hmm. so then you take an online version. Um, and, and that's not the case. The case um, in many schools, and I think that's the paradigm shift that we need, is especially if it's a topic that the students are interested in and it just happens that it's not offered here. Mm -hmm. They're not limited. Having the online coursework expands the ability to go into something that they're truly interested in learning. And, we, we, and through VLAX and, and more VLAX than Plato, they have so many offerings that kids can go after and so it's gonna give them that opportunity. Right. And it's not just credit acquisition anymore, it's, I mean, uh, recovery, it's acquisition, so. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, just Thank can you I make know. one quick note, Jill? Just a, t a tentative date, uh, the top 10 dinner, June yeah. 8th. It's a Thursday, I believe it is. Okay. Is it Thursday? I believe so. So right. I'll get more information, and once I have that date, um, we'll get you out of an invitation. So. Signing of MS-22. You have the pages in your packet as a, this is what it looks like so you knew ahead of time what you were signing. Mm -hmm. State likes blue. Oh. That's just the supporting pages that go with it. Yeah. All right. Oh, this 
just pass the packet as well. While that's passing along, <laughs> can we move on to? I mean, we don't have to watch everybody sign it, right? Probably okay. not, no. Uh, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I'm signing in a different place. General fund report for school year 18. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 17, 18. 17, 18. Um, so what we've done is we've provided for you what the, the budget is with all the warrant articles that passed. Mm -hmm. uh, for the 17, 18 year, we've included a packet for you as well as have posted it on the um, page of the uh, district website. Um, if you just go under Farmington School Board and then scroll down, it's down in the middle. And it shows that it's the general fund re report, fund 10. What you had last time was these lines, but they hadn't been reconciled with the MS-22 yet. And so that's now been done. So what you have under the revised budget aligns all of those pieces. So. My only question regarding that is there were two columns. One was the proposed and then one was the adjusted, but I didn't see any adjustments. Okay. So, um, because the, the <laughs> on this report, is that what you're referring uh, to? On okay. So there are no budget adjustments yet okay. for 1718. We really haven't started spending. But this is the same it. structure that you yeah. will see throughout oh, next oh, year. Yeah. Okay. So the line is there knowing that adjustments will happen. They just, we haven't gotten there yet. <laughs> Thank you. And hopefully we won't make too many adjustments. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> 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 Ritual thinking, yes. Any questions? Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, so when you look at the page 32 grand total lines, mm -hmm. they're different from the report we got last meeting. It says last year period, 2016-17, uh, bottom line is 10.2 million. But Are you last referring to what's in your packet? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Because that's looking at what's been expended year to date. Not so which budget. Point this was run. Then I'm confused about the headers again. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, this is the adopted piece. Um, last year, that's what we've spent to date. So under yeah. under the first column, Angie, on page mm -hmm. 32, mm -hmm. where it says 10273000 mm -hmm. that's what was has been spent as of 427 for that period this year. So that's 2016, 2017. We haven't expended everything because we're not quite to the end right. yet. Right. That's what happens right. when you're working in two years. You're, the current year is, is going to change as we get to through the end of June. Um, so those are actual expenditures. does not include the encumbrances for this year. Um, okay. Well, when the header just says last year period and it has those dates, I yes. mean, but, and because the it's year not saying what's budgeted. It's not saying what's... Expended well, to date, it's not saying. Well, it's it's the year to date expenditure though. It's on next year's budget, budget. but it's what's been spent to date on that year's budget. So it's it lists 2016-17, and that's all we've spent in that period okay. to this point. I can't show it completely expended or I'm in trouble. Right. Well, it's, the last date of that is in the future. So we correct. Right. Yes. We're not to June 30th. It is like, <coughs> Rothell, if I change that, okay. when they get their 1617, um, then that's going to show. Right. So and if, if we shift it, yeah. We, that's what happens when you're working in two years. Yeah. We can't <laughs> shift this one or it will shift what goes forward. So, so then if I take a look at what should be the bottom line for school year 18, right? The math, the way I work it out, is we take the amount that we adopted back in November, which was $14,599,224. Then we had the um, cut that was done at the hearing in January, and then the amendment to add back in some of that at the deliberative session. Correct. And it doesn't add up to what's this on this. This also has to include anything that was on the warrant. So it includes okay. 
those other pieces that were raised and appropriated, that's why the bottom line is different. Okay, great. That's why it had to be reconciled to the MS-22, because those other pieces are on the MS-22. Okay. So this bottom line of the MS-22 should match the Warren Article number 3 plus 4, 6, all of the right. Warren Articles right. that are listed here. All yes. warrants that passed were um, yeah. sixteen million two hundred seventeen. Thousand four hundred seventy one dollars. Yeah. Three, six, four, eight, and eleven, and ten. Thank you so much. Any other questions? Okay. Any other old business? Are we receiving um, any bids yet for? Or what are we doing with? Um, and you may have asked. You may have talked about it at the last meeting with um, food service. Um, I have taken one company through um, Fitzbolt. Um, they do do some work more along the um, Connecticut River Valley area, um, but I have taken them through on a tour throughout the district, um, providing them some information. The bids are due on Monday, um, May fifteenth at three o'clock. Um, and I've also heard from Cafe Services, who um, also provided them some information, but they're already familiar with us. It's not required. Uh, but they do plan on providing a, uh, submitting a proposal to us. We were also working on getting up a, what it would cost if we did it in-house. Did we talk about that? That's or correct, that? yes. Yeah, the state, the state recommends that we do that as well. Mm -hmm. um, one of the, our technical advisors says kind of the, we really the should bid that comes take along. an opportunity so we'll have talk. we'll have bids we'll have bids will we have bids to look at the night of the 15th and probably not you will you, you're going to get will? the okay. presentations i will give them okay. to you it won't really give me much time to really read through everything yeah. um mm -hmm. but and I'll also provide them to you also the cost of doing an in-house program that night as well mm -hmm. okay yeah cool. that's that's Warren. what the Since board wants mr gordon's here um are we on an off year for spraying for mosquitoes and ticks? Is this our off year, or are they planning on spraying? I think it's in every year. No. Okay. Yeah, we mm -hmm. were doing it every other year. So we're going to do it this year. Do we have a schedule for that? Or has it happened yet? I haven't. They usually don't start until June. Okay. The answer was, uh, for those of you at home, that we probably start that in June. It looks like it's going to be an every year thing to spray. Mm -hmm. Anything else? I just had a quick yeah. question. Was there anything we needed to touch base on regarding the SAU moving? Any updates or anything in regards to that? I know there were some questions raised at the last meeting. I have a walkthrough scheduled with Dennis Roseberry on the 11th. Um, and at that point, hope to have some other answers about what other pieces we may need to have in hand. Um, he and I have been kind of doing this for quite some time. so. Um, we have that scheduled now as of this morning and um, we will hopefully be able to move fairly quickly um, some of the painting happened over break so the hallway looks nice and bright now um, so we have a start <laughs> and uh, trying to get the pieces done that we can as soon as we can so. have we notified our landlord that we're not going to continue the lease Yes. Okay. Okay. yes. Um, there was one thing we were waiting on the Department of Ed for information on the process and reasons for accessing of the emergency fund. And we have received no information at this point. Okay. Thank you. I'm past it. So I'm hoping I don't have an emergency and need to know. <laughs> right. <laughs> we wanted to have the info on yes. hand. Okay. Public participation. Quiet, quiet night. Um, our next meeting will be May 8th as we join the other boards uh, in the area for, up in Kingswood. Our next meeting here will be May 15th. Uh, we'll start with a public hearing at 6 p.m. And we'll determine whether or not our meeting will start at 6.30 or 7, depending on what we get for advice on how long to keep the public hearing open. So thank you to those of you who came out tonight. Thank you to those of you um, watching from home. I'll entertain a motion to go into 
non-public, I believe we're in session five. <laughs> so moved. So moved by Penny. Second. Second by Stan. All those in favor by roll. Aye. Good night, folks. Do we want to move down to the other room, or do we need a break? Oh.